Good morning and good afternoon. This is Julie Courtney with Penguin Computing. And I wanted to thank you all very much for joining us today with our webinar with Numeca Fine Marine. And I wanted to let you know we will have time at the end of the webinar for questions. So please feel free to submit your questions through the chat window on join.me, and we will answer those for you at the end of the webinar. And um, I, it's a pleasure for me to introduce our presenters today. Uh, Will Cotty with Penguin Computing is our Director of Cloud Solutions. And Roque Lopez from New Mecca Fine Marine is a Senior Account Manager. So Will, without further ado, I'll turn things over to you. Great. Thank you, Julie. To start with, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Penguin Computing and a bit about Penguin Computing On Demand, our pod service. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are already pod users, so please bear with me. So I'll tell you a little bit about that. I'll give you a quick demo of pod, and then we'll turn it over to Roque to, to show you how uh, Fine Marine works on pod. Penguin is one of North America's largest suppliers of high performance computing and enterprise scale out solutions. Uh, we're based in Fremont, California, and we've been uh, doing this for about 16 or maybe 17 years now. We design, build, and deliver uh, compute, storage, and network solutions that really deliver on the, vi the vision of open compute. We also own and operate our own HPC as a service, which is POD. And we use all of Penguin's tools to do that with, all the way from our Tundra Overcompute, our Arctic Networking, our Frostbite Lustre Storage. Uh, we use uh, open source tools to do all of it with uh, Ceph, Gluster, Swift, ZFS, software-defined networks. Everything that we put together for customers, we use for Pod. Now, when you think about cloud, people frequently think of virtualized machines and things like that. Pod's different. Pod's a true HPC environment. So it's a ready-to-go HPC compute cluster. It's bare metal. There's no hyper-threading, no virtual CPUs. Everything is connected for, with InfiniBand or faster uh, low-latency, high-speed networks. And it's very similar to any compute cluster you've used anywhere. Security is a little bit different. You'll notice that we're single tenant. No one else can ever use a compute node while you're using it. We have hundreds of pre-configured and ready to run applications. We have uh, many, many different ISVs. We have all sorts of open source tools. And of course, we have all the new Mecca suite. We're very proud of our support. We're proud of that because that's what we continually hear from all our users. While we design and manage it with our, our Linux expertise in-house, our sysadmins that you'll be talking to actually have a lot more than just computer experience. Those sysadmins have domain knowledge, so you'll be able to talk to them in your language about engineering problems rather than having to translate into computer language to talk to them. Um, there's always free support uh, for not just for the making sure the cluster works, but to get your applications running right and optimizing your workflows so it works the way you need it to in your business. You'll never have to do any system administration. We take care of all that. There's a lot of different ways to, to work with POD. Uh, everyone gets a free login node, and that login node uh, uh, very soon will actually be a, a lightweight de desktop. Uh, there's a secure web portal that I'll be showing you here in a minute that allows you to manage your account and actually do a little bit of uh, work with your jobs. You can monitor your jobs and control your jobs through that portal also. The most common way probably for people to work with Pod is still SSHing to a, a Linux command line. But we also have a clientless 3D remote visualization product called Skilled Cloud Workstation. And Roque will be showing you a, a fine marine running on that uh, in a short period of time here. 
And people have really migrated to that. It makes it very easy so you don't have to move your data back and forth to do, do post processing. We try to keep all our billing very clear and very predictable. Every time we make a change, we look at it and say, is this clear and is this predictable? You pay for use, there's no commitment required, there's no sign up fees, there's no association fees. You pay for your compute by the core hour. We meter that to three seconds. We actually round down three seconds. We don't round up at three seconds. So there's no, frequently in, in, in cloud computing, you have to you know, buy things by the hour. We don't, we do that by three second intervals. We charge for your storage by the average gigabyte per month. Depending upon the technology you choose, it's either the amount you've allocated or the amount you actually have in use. Again, there's a free login node, so or, uh, uh, for uh, command line uh, use, or for uh, using a desktop in a browser. <coughs> Excuse me. We never charge network bandwidth charges, so uploading your models and downloading your results doesn't change the, your bill whatsoever. We also provide with detail accounting and reporting, and I'll show you that here in a minute. I can show you the portal view of it, and we can talk about what you can actually download to integrate into your environment. So this is the pod portal. This is where you come to sign up for an account and once you have an account to manage your account. Very easy to get access. You just find the get access button here in the middle of the page and click on it. And we'll collect some information. And then you'll get a link back to come back and, and finish setting up your account. I'm just gonna sign in as a regular user here. In the first page, I can see an, uh, an overview of my account. I'm the account owner, so I have other people that are, that are actually using my account also. That's very easy to do. If I want to add someone to my account, so say you've got a, uh, in your company, you've got a corporate account and you want to add engineers or, or, or take engineers access away, it's very easy to get them, get them added. Just uh, put in their name and an email address and they'll get a link to come back and finish setting up their account. If there's some user that you no longer want to use, you don't have to uh, even contact us about that. You can just manage the user and disable their account. Now, when you first come in, you'll be asked to set up a login node. There's various types of login nodes, but generally speaking, what you want to do is create a free login node. It's very easy to do. Just click a button, give it a name so you remember what it is, and select the pod.free. I didn't name it. Once that login node is created, you'll get an IP address that then you can SSH to. And it'll appear much like this. You'll see that IP address there. Speaking of SSHing, we don't allow password SSH logins because they're not very secure. And so this is just a mechanism so you can upload your private key. Or, I'm sorry, upload your public key so you can uh, use public key uh, encryption to SSH to, the, to, to pod. There's directions for how to do it for Linux or, or Mac, and directions for how to set things up on Windows. Storage is very similar to uh, NIP and login node. You just create storage. When you come in, there'll be a create storage button. And you can always change your volume size just by clicking the button here. Now, if you're managing this for a company, you might want to limit the amount of hours that, that uh, people use. 
so, so you have a, a good idea of what your bill will be every month. And so you can set account usage alerts. And then you'll get an email when your account usage hits 80, 90, and 100%. You can also do that for individual users. So you can decide for those individual users which they can do it. And you can also arrange things by groups. So you can be notified on group usage. These are the reports I was talking about. This is what I can see. I can see that our billing period just started a couple, three days ago. And I've used about $38 in charges. I can always go back to another month. I can see my usage broken down by all the users. I can specify projects when I submit a job. So then I'll get a, a breakdown by project. Then I can see which login nodes I've had active. There's also an Excel spreadsheet you can download here. Now that will give you uh, really fine grained detail. It'll show every job you've ran, what resources you used, uh, how long it ran for, how much you paid for it. Um, makes it, and it, it breaks it down by groups, by users, by projects. It's, it's very, very handy if you're using, uh, using it to uh, do bill backs inside your company or if you have uh, customers that you're doing bill through for the work you're doing. So that all seems pretty simple. That is really how you manage your account on Pod. So this is really the cloud part of Pod, where, where you get the, the cloud access. Um, you can provision everything yourself. You can manage your accounts. But then you can also actually see the cluster. This is where you start to, to interact with the, with the back end of Pod, which, as I said, is a, is a standard HPC cluster. You can see high-level usage on on pod. You're not really allowed to see everybody else's jobs, but you can see generally what, what the uh, cluster is doing. You can see we've got some very high peaks in usage here. Now, that's very unusual. Um, customers have caught us by surprise, and so we're actually adding about 5,000 cores this week and are scheduled to add many, many more cores in the next couple months. We try to over-provision pod to make sure that you don't wait in the queue for your job to run. So we actually start uh, when we first ordered the, this uh, bunch of hardware. So we started hitting peaks of 60%. You can submit jobs from here. Um, and I'm actually going to submit a quick job here so that we can actually see how that works. Generally speaking, we're okay. We'll show you how um, how you submit a NUMECA job. But once you have that job running, you can also come here and you can monitor it. And so while you probably won't be submitting a job from here, let me submit one just so I can show you how you can monitor a job. This is kind of useful if you have the same job running over and over and you just want someone to change things a little bit. So they can change the queue they're running on. Now, a word about queues. We uh, divide up our, our queues architecturally. So you've got several different classes of processors available right now. Um, <clears throat> the H30, which is the one we're going to be using for the demo today, are actually Sandy Bridge processors with uh, 16 cores per, per node and about uh, four gig of memory per core. The next step up is our Hazel processors. Uh, those have 20 cores per node, and those have about uh, six gig per core. Uh, the ones we're turning on this week are actually the new class of Broadwell processors, and those will uh, have 28 cores per node and quite a lot of memory per, per core, actually. I think it's, it's nine gig of memory per core. <laughs> As we advance to the next uh, upgrade for Pod, we'll be we'll be tracking Intel and using whatever the most current CPUs are available. I 
I could even edit the script online here if I want to. This would be my submission script. It's over here, the PBS submission script. So if you if you're used to using Torque, uh, this would look very familiar to you. We actually use Moab for our, our scheduler and Torque for our resource manager. You can see here that I've got a job queued now. And that should start in just a second. Well, we're waiting for that to start. I want to just show you the most common way for people to use pod. And that is really still to the Linux command line. You can see what our different queues are. These are all always listed there so you can be reminded what you're going to be submitting to. And I use the normal Linux command. Now I can see that, that job's actually started running again. So let's go back and take a look at that. You can see that I'm running on two nodes here. Now, you're only allowed to see the, the uh, CPUs that you're actually using for privacy reasons. But right here I can see, generally speaking, what my job's doing. I'm looking at a couple different metrics here, the, the CPU usage and the memory usage. And I can see it's actually running on both of those. And I can actually go to a lot, lot more detail. I can look at it by the by the node, and I can each, actually break that down into what each one of the CPUs is doing. You can see that that job is actually completed now, and it requeues itself to, for demo purposes. So you can see I've got another one in the queue here. The other interesting way to interact with Pod is Skill Cloud Workstation. Now, I don't want to take away from Roque's uh, presentation, so I'll, I will not keep this up very long. But what Skill Cloud Workstation allows you to do is actually have a desktop that's connected to the cluster fabric. So I no longer have to download all my results. I can actually process it here. And while it's a complete Linux desktop, I'm doing it in a browser. I'm just using the, um, the Chrome browser right here that I'm using. Um, work with any modern browser. And you don't have to download any, any software. Uh, there's no Java behind it. Um, it just goes through a regular HTTPS connection. And so it's very easy to use behind firewalls even. One of the things that's very interesting is if you need assistance, for instance, or if you want to collaborate with someone, you can just create an invitation. And that person will, you can just copy this invitation and send them the link, and then they'll be able to come join you and actually share the screen. You might notice that Roque and I are both logged in right now. I'm going to sign out of that and then pass this over to Roque if he'll ask to be the presenter. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, thanks again for joining us today. Thank you, Will, for that uh, overview of pod services. It's, it's, a, it's very nice to, to work with you guys. I'm, I'm an account manager at Nomeka USA. Uh, uh, I've been working now for a little bit more than 10 years at Nomeka, um, mostly building experience uh, with, with customers um, in tech support, consulting, 
and and account service, uh, mainly a post sale a, a service for licensing, um, and management of uh, our users' needs, designing custom projects, designing and and preparing projects with a, with the development team at the Mecca to improve and customize um, our our tools. Um, I don't, I'm also a little bit proud to say that um, in my 10 years working at the Mecca, actually uh, when when I started working, I, I I was a customer of Penguin Computing. At the Mecca, we started. I was in charge of um, selecting and equipping our our offices with uh, with high end workstations, and that's how we actually met Penguin Computing and starting working together. And well, it's been it's been a nice ride <laughs> these 10 years, growing uh, side by side. And now, uh, well, uh, both of our companies have matured and, and grown quite a bit. And, and now we have this, this opportunity to partner again in, in the cloud um, with, with the Penguin on demand and the Numeca software solutions on demand as well. So uh, well, without further ado, let me um, start this presentation here. Um, so I'm gonna give a quick introduction to Numeca, uh, description of Fun Marine, uh, show you a few application examples, uh, and then we will do a quick demo where we will actually work directly on one of the trial uh, workstation uh, cloud uh, solution, and we're going to submit a job. So it's gonna be pretty exciting stuff. Um, about the Meta, so we're we're an international company. Uh, we're we're uh, we have more than 25 years servicing our engineering community, and we we specialize mostly in the development and simulation software, focused mainly in computational fluid dynamics applications. Um, so we uh, now in that field, we are one of the fastest growing CFD software providers, commercial CFD software providers. Uh, our, um, we have worldwide presence uh, with more than uh, 2,500 licenses in use, and probably about three, about 5,000 uh, users worldwide. Um, and, and well, we we continue to grow uh, in at a sustained uh, uh, rate. Uh, over the last five years, uh, we we have kept a solid growth of 20%. Now. The Mecca philosophy is um, that we develop applications. Not we don't have a single solution for everything. Uh, we we develop uh, software applications that are specialized on different market sectors. So we have software that is focused on the automotive and aeronautics, uh, space technology, propulsion and uh, power generation, turbo machinery, uh, environment analysis, and well, uh, marine engineering. Uh, so, so our vision is to produce something that will be very optimal uh, for the specialist uh, to use in in their field. Uh, it will be backed up by a strong research and development um, effort. Numeca Numeca was born as a spin-off of uh, Professor Charles Hirsch's uh, research group in the Brzee University in Brussels, and well, since then we have kept that philosophy of uh, continuously participating in in research projects and developing uh, and, and and because we believe that's the only way to develop true state of the art uh, uh, solutions uh, and well also we have a lot of experience in design of optimization both as a consulting service but also as optimization software um, that can be coupled with any of our simulation tools in order to help you find the optimal model or the optimal design. Of your baseline uh, um, product. Uh, so anyway, today we are going to focus on the marine engineering uh, sector. Uh, we have for this sector, uh, marine engineers and naval architects. We have this product, fine marine. Fine stands for flow integrated and uh, 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 flow in environment. Uh, well, marine is the indication for our our uh, industry sector. Um, so Fine Marine is now, we believe, the leading package, the CFD package for naval architects and marine engineers. It's really easy to use. Um, we have now more than uh, 100 customers uh, worldwide of Fine Marine alone. 
And, and FindMining has been actually one of our fastest growing products. Uh, also by demand, it's one of the first products that were requested to be readily available in the cloud. Uh, well, we have um, FindMining's reputation is backed up by uh, a lot of our customers. So here we have a few, a few of them. Uh, in, in North America, we're working continuously with uh, CSRA, Navatech, Stevens Institute, uh, Oracle Team USA uh, is, is using FindMarine as well for their next America's Cup challenge. Um, Morelli and Melvin is also a, a very good friend and, and, and user of, of, of our software, and many more. Um, now, about FindMarine. So with FindMarine, you get everything you need to run a complete simulation uh, of, of, of your vessel or, or marine project. Uh, we offer a graphical user interface that contains the measure, the grid generator, Hexpress, the flow solver, and the post-processing tool, CFB. Now, the graphical user interface, of course, can be used interactively, uh, but also can be driven by what we called the Sea Wizard, uh, which, is, which is an awesome tool that will basically take um, by the hand the user to set up all the different uh, settings of, of their jobs. And what is important of the Sea Wizard is that um, we, we worked very hard on it. We accumulated over a few years experience and feedback from our customers. And the goal uh, was to make sure that the user doesn't feel that they need to have a PhD or specialization in computational fluid dynamics in addition to their marine uh, specialization. So we wanted to make um, uh, the usage of fine marine as pragmatical as possible. And, and now we can say very proudly that uh, the Sea Wizard uh, can help the users to set up almost any type of available configuration in, in fine marine. Now, uh, side note about the flow solver. The flow solver has been developed in partnership with uh, the group of Dr. Michel Bissonneau in the Eco Central de Nantes, um, and and uh, well, in collaboration with with them, we have uh, pretty much also uh, mature and solidified the the fine marine uh, solution. Um, now, a few notes about the measure. So, a few key features. Uh, it's an unstructured and isotropic and fully hexahedral uh, mesh uh, generator. Um, it allows you to insert high quality viscous layers. Uh, we have a very uh, uh, robust and, and, and efficient insulation method. And, well, it comes with everything you need to uh, estimate properly the mesh and design your mesh for for the turbulence modeling that you need. Um, it requires limited user inputs. It has a very high degree of automation. Um, it allows you to import geometries from Parasolid, SDL, KTEV5. Um, and, and well, also once you have a mesh, and let's say that you're exploring a family of different designs, but uh, which are just variations of the same vessel. Uh, so so with Express, it's very easy to simply swap your domain. And that way, you can use the exact same mesh settings to run simulations on on different uh, uh, boat design. Um, it it is it is fast. It allows a, a very efficient meshing of complex bodies. Uh, as we can see there in that uh, picture, we have a, 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 a hole with with appendages, and there is very high detail of capture of those appendages. Um, you also have the freedom to move parts in the geometry. And well, also one thing that is very attractive for power users is that it's fully scriptable. Uh, so it means that you can run your mesh generation uh, workflow uh, completely in batch mode by help uh, by combining uh, uh, the power of Python programming language and and well our Nomeka solution. Um, now some examples of nice meshes here. We have this one is a, a moving parts mesh where, as you can see. Um, we are using the exact same meshing uh, settings, but then the, the rudder position is changing uh, as needed by the design, and the mesh automatically updates uh, for that um, uh, new position. Uh, this is another example where actually we have a very high detail capture of a high-speed boat with an upward motor, 
Um, what is interesting also here, as you may notice on, on, on screen, is that the free surface, uh, this high clustered black region of the mesh, that's, that's where the free surface is located. Uh, so basically it's the interaction of the water with, uh, well, with, the, uh, uh, with the air volume and well, uh, with the solid body of the vessel. Uh, however, as you can see here also, Hexpress is, um, a, a has the capability to work in combination with the solver uh, for adaptive grid refinement. And in fact, here you can see that we have clusters of different grid density that uh, the grid density has been increased depending on the solution. So it's that adaptive grid refinement method um, a, a solution that we're looking at here. Um, now, a few words about the CFD solver. Um, it's a pressure-based segregated solver. Um, it allows you, it works in parallel and allows you to do both 2D, 3D, uh, and phase-based approach uh, modeling. The second order spatial temporal discretization uh, approach. Um, it's a monofluid and multi-fluid compatible. So you can uh, model things that are completely submerged and where you can neglect, neglect the influence of the air volume. And well, the multi-fluid configuration is the more classical approach where you have uh, your vessel, your boat, or maybe an offshore platform where part of the body is submerged and uh, the rest is not. But there is an interaction between uh, the, the fluid around uh, the body and, and well, also um, the, the turbulence in the outer volume of air. Um, and then, well, the, the approach is a pre-surface capturing strategy uh, with VOF or volume of fraction uh, with, with high resolution interface schemes. So this, these interface schemes are, are very robust and, and they allow to uh, capture very accurately the free surface uh, shapes uh, that develop depending on the, on the boat uh, or the imposed uh, flow regime. Uh, we can run Euler and average stock flows, laminar and turbulent, steady and unsteady capabilities. And well, we have a wide library of turbulence modeling uh, from very uh, basic one equation model like Sparamara to the most complex and uh, used in the industry like SSTDK, Omega, Wilco scale, or W, and such. Um, and then, well, for the solution, uh, well, we have the possibility to, to export the fine marine solution, obviously, natively to CFView, our own uh, post processing solution, but you can also export to third party post-processing tools like TechPlot, Insight, FieldView, and uh, well, the uh, industry standard uh, for CFD, the CGNS format. Uh, the solver has a capability to solve all six degrees of freedom, um, but they can also be set as boundary condition when you have them uh, fixed or, or imposed. When you impose a motion, well, you can define uh, different ways, uh, uh, you can define in different ways that motion either by constant speed, classic ramps, uh, uh, different types of ramps, uh, gyration, or also user-defined uh, functions. Um, now, some of the key features in the solver uh, solution uh, or applications wheel, uh, we have um, a, well, a, every, any type of resistance analysis, with which, which would be the most basic and often used application uh, for, for CFD. Uh, well, uh, you, can, you can take advantage of, a, of, of, of the solver. It is very, very fast uh, using quasi-static motion solver or sub-cycling method. Um, and well, uh, it's backed up by a large uh, a number of publications. So the accuracy of the solver, uh, it, it, it's been paramount for us. And, and we have um, uh, many papers available if, if you would like to, to raise some of them. Uh, then for sea keeping and maneuvering, uh, well, there uh, the complexity of that type of modeling is increased. Uh, well, we have different methods there. You can solve six degrees of freedom, include waves. Uh, we have a wave generator that allows you to create regular waves, but also introduce regular irregular um, sea state pattern. Uh, you can define your motion loss. It supports overset. It supports grid deformation. Um, also for high speed uh, uh, modeling, it, it has a planning regime for high speed boats that are basically aqua planning. Um, and then for propulsion, well, there are different uh, levels to include propulsion modeling in your uh, computation. 
uh, but we support a well a future disk sliding grid, a adaptive grid refinement, and also a big problem in propulsion uh, is its cavitation. So, so the cavitation models are all compatible with propulsion. And then uh, for optimization, well, we have all all the solver scripting and batch capabilities uh, well are readily available out of the box. So you can couple uh, these with optimization tools like well, Numeca software or also. Uh, for example, Friendship is, is another software that has been used before with, with Fine Marine for, for optimization. Uh, then the post-processing tools, um, CF View allows you to visualize the scalar vector quantities and create all, sort of, all sorts of plots, from Cartesian plots, contour plots, streamlines, animations, work in steady and steady mode. Uh, well, it's fully scriptable as, as well with, with Python programming language. And also, more importantly, we are continually uh, including with each new release by receiving the feedback from our users, uh, well, marine dedicated plugins. These are basically macros that allow you to post process the solution uh, with one click to produce results or visualization of results that are useful uh, for, for our uh, naval architects and marine engineers out there. Um, now let me show you a few solutions here. Uh, so we have some shots of high-speed crafts with a, where we can see the wake and streamlines around the craft. Um, this is a nice animation uh, that uh, shows you the, 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 the extent of the motion handling capability. So we have there a, a, a submarine uh, with some gyration imposed. Uh, we also have here a solution with PMM. Uh, where you can see uh, how uh, forces and, and, and displacements are tracked uh, in, in, in these plots in addition to the visualization of the, of the vessel. Um, we also have here, let me show you, there we go. This is a benchmark, a very interesting benchmark of a wedge case where, well, you can see in the static picture, that's a shot of the uh, final state of the, inter of the free surface interaction between the wedge solid body and, well, the current that was applied uh, uh, in, 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 this, in this tank uh, test. Now, you can see here in, in the bigger portion of the screen, it's actually um, the evolution uh, as a function of time. It's an unsteady, this is an unsteady simulation where we start, uh, well, we basically calm water and then we ramp up the speed uh, in order to produce the wedge uh, free surface break. And you can see how the final state is very close uh, to the uh, actual experiment. Um, so we, we have, I, I believe we have a publication uh, for that case. Now, this is this other case that I'm going to show you here. It's it's also it's courtesy of one of our uh, largest customers in um, in Europe, uh, Van Usanen. Uh, so they they have here uh, set up side by side a fine marine simulation with a tow tank uh, simulation. This is a full on stage simulation uh, with a, a couple of degrees of freedom open. And um, and well, waves uh, a regular wave pattern uh, imposed as uh, as a boundary condition. And you can see here that the match between experiment and simulation is quite good. Now, what is interesting here is that uh, when when you think about this in terms of money, think about how much it costs you to do a tow tank test, and then how much it would cost you to do uh, a simulation. So if you can trust your simulation uh, uh, to the level that Van Usanen does, and as you can see here with this validation case, well, you can save uh, uh, thousands, uh, if not hundreds of, 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 uh, of thousands of dollars um, uh, with a simulation like this. We'll, uh, um, we'll, we'll talk about some numbers later, but uh, it will probably be just a few hundred dollars per simulation to uh, uh, which is very cheap uh, when compared to a tow tank uh, uh, analysis. Um, now, in, uh, talking a little bit about propulsion, um, the, uh, there are different ways to simulate propulsion in fine marine. You can go from the center of gravity. This is the default. And basically, it means that you impose a motion on your boat. 
Uh, but then you can also uh, uh, impose a force, a resultant force in the propeller location, or you can actually create an actuator disk at the propeller location uh, where you can introduce velocity and pressure effects in addition to just the force definition. But you can also directly model the full propeller and apply a motion to that propeller, apply RPMs to that propeller, and well, the system will find uh, the resultant uh, proportion and apply that to the vessel. Um, so in these three last scenarios, the proportion is defined at the actual propeller location. And well, as you move from left to right, the level of complexity of the simulation is higher, but also the accuracy of the solution and the simulation is, is higher as well. Um, and of course, uh, the, the increased detail in proportion will, will result in higher, um, a, a more, more CPU cost uh, for, for your simulation. But anyway, let me show you here some uh, proportion results. Uh, this is an example of, uh, of a body with a water jet. So actually there an actuator disk was a model inside uh, the jet passage. So it, it could create the suction of, um, of, of water from under the hull and then uh, push that in the form of a jet through the nozzle and then give propulsion to, to the vessel. Once the jet uh, is, is solved, uh, well, it's coupled uh, with the motion of the vessel and you get the complete uh, uh, solution uh, there. Uh, you can also uh, couple propulsion with sea keeping. So here we have an example from uh, a benchmark where uh, we, ha we have the, the vessel, we have modeled the propeller uh, with, with a pod in the, in the, in, under the transom of, of the vessel. And well, there's a sliding grid model going on um, uh, taking care of the RPM of the propeller. But at the same time, this is interacting with a wave pattern and, and well, the degrees of freedom of the vessel that uh, as you can see, um, uh, sometimes the, the, the propeller might aerate because it, it's interacting with the, with the free surface and the wave motion as well. So this kind of combined simulation is uh, something that you can do as well. These are another of a uh, couple of examples from propulsion. Uh, we have a shrouded uh, propeller on the left. Um, also, we have an example here of cavitation, where we have the propeller model, and you can see how the cavitation sheets, the cavitation bubbles, starts to um, well develop. And well, they are they are important because they greatly influence the performance and the maneuverability of your uh, of your vessel as well. Uh, well, for my final example, I want to talk a little bit about uh, overset. Overset grids uh, method is also known as overlapping grids or chimera method. Uh, well, an overlapping mesh, what it means is that you have two grids or more, uh, depending on how many body, model bodies you're uh, uh, making interaction with. But uh, what you have is an, um, a, a mesh, a, a highly detailed mesh of the body and then you have a coarser mesh of uh, what we call the background mesh, which is basically the medium where this body will be interacting. And well, uh, the solver will take care of the interpolation of data uh, and the flow information transfer between the, these two meshes. Now, this method allows you to apply, uh, to extend the range of applications of your simulations to some things that before were impossible, like for example, complex motion simulations, like this one we're looking at on screen right now, interactions between uh, movable appendages of your body, um, a, a interactions between multiple bodies. These were simulations that were very highly, uh, very, very costly, but also very very difficult to, to obtain, mainly because the when you're not using an overset mesh, there is a problem that you have to deal, which is the grid deformation, and you can easily generate um, well, uh, some uh, uh, negative cells there uh, with just a classic mesh deformation method. Here we can see in this uh, couple of animations. I hope uh, I hope it's it's going well through the web session. But anyway, you have um, a, on the upper left corner a presentation of the mesh, uh, the overset mesh interaction, and then uh, well we have the CFV solution. We're, uh, we're looking at the lifeboat, uh, the typical boat, lifeboat that you will see on a large uh, ship or an offshore platform. And well, it's simulating the drop off of that vessel in case of an emergency. And uh, well, one thing that is important there 
is, for example, the slamming to compute the slamming forces uh, to improve the design of the of the vessel structure, uh, and well, also uh, make sure that uh, the, the the cargo and people are safe uh, when when going through that uh, situation. Um, this is another example. I don't have an animation there, but uh, this is an application of overset where we are combining the motion of the ship, uh, the motion of the rudder, and also the sliding grid of the propeller. So you can see here in this detail that we have sort of a box mesh around the rudder. So that's the overset component. And then we have the sliding grid for the, for the propeller. And this is all combined with the background mesh of the vessel, and we're solving for motion there. So we have, uh, for example, to give you an idea of the size of a model like this, we have about 9 million cells for the sheet mesh. Uh, then we have 1.5 million cells for the propeller sliding grid, and a million cells uh, of mesh uh, around the, the movable rudder. And well, the, in this simulation, roll and jaw uh, ship angles are solved, and the gyration is is imposed. So this is this is one of the extreme examples where you can take advantage of uh, of overset. Now uh, let's stand to move on for the live demo. So for the live demo, what I have is the adaptive grid refinement uh, example. Uh, so we have some um, a, the KCS vessel uh, has body analysis where we have activated a grid with refinement. So let me go back to the workstation, the cloud workstation. Um, and well, what we have here is the fine marine interface. Fine marine interface, uh, it's very simple to use the interface we have on the left panel in a top-down direction. Basically are the steps, the, the, the steps that you have to follow in order to complete the simulation uh, job. So you create your computations, you set your configuration parameters, and you can visualize your model. Now, for the for the model here, what I have is uh, uh, well, right now you see the wireframe, but it's a half body. It's the KCS uh, benchmark uh, vessel, and well, the mesh has already been uh, uh, generated with our Hexpress meshing tool. Uh, now, from here, once uh, well, uh, this project is already set, and well, the focus of this webinar is not to show you the sequential work, but uh, well, in the plugins or when you launch the, the the interface from for the first time, you have the option to get started with the sequential. And what the sequential will do is that it will allow you to go through all these settings uh, in a uh, semi-automated way, so you you have minimum interaction with with the interface. Um, but anyway, so now once you have your computations set, as you can see here, you can start by creating one computation and then you can duplicate uh, that computation and then modify the slightly boundary conditions. Or like I have done in this case, I'm using each computation to increase the number of cores because we did a quick uh, sort of a scalability uh, uh, analysis for you guys to appreciate uh, the benefit of using uh, uh, Pod and Numeca on the cloud. Uh, but anyway, so here we have, um, well, I have created the job. Once you create the job and you do the whole setup of the boundary conditions and the outputs that you want, you can uh, save the simulation file. And once you save the simulation file, you go back to your uh, shell and, and you will, um, well, you can check the status of, of the course in your model, but then you will have a launch script that is, uh, that is ready to go. And pretty much you can just do um, queue stop and then your launch script. And when you do that, uh, well, I have here already in the background a uh, shell that is watching uh, the status of my queue. And you can see that the job has been submitted. You have your own job ID, so you can keep track of the job uh, either here on the shells or you, you can also go to the uh, pod penguin computing on the man management a web portal. Um, and while well, you have the name of the job, the user that has submitted the job, and while well, the status, and the queue to which the, the job is running. Now, uh, this job is running. Uh, this job is uh, taking, a, I launched it on 16 cores, so it will take probably like about 22 minutes uh, to, to complete. Um, but anyway, don't worry, I have already a case that, uh, that, that is complete here. Uh, you can see now the status has changed to running. 
so so job stream is often they start pretty pretty fast and well eventually once the job is running well you can um you can always uh, tell the the status of the job uh, and of course you can do that uh, with the with a shell um by tracking uh what we call the standard uh standard output file uh but also you can uh, well uh, launch the monitoring uh tool which allows you to follow uh convergence history and while the convergence history uh, will uh, will, pre will have uh the, the 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 evolution of the solution per time step and well you can take a look at residuals there but you can also take a look at different uh, uh uh, quantities to display like uh, motions or forces, for example. Uh, here we have, uh, that's a partially computed solution. This is the full solution. And well, you can see here that forces have uh, completely uh, converged. So once your solution is converged and the job uh, is done, uh, well, you will get a prompt from the standard output uh, file about that. So you can see right now the job is, is running. Eventually, uh, what you see is in, let me show you here, um, S60, uh, 32. Let me show you a job that is done. Um, so actually, you will, yeah. So this is this is a job that I learned run for a long time, about 800 iterations, so we could have a complete converged solution. Uh, but you get a summary of the CPU uh, uh, computation time of that job. Let's take a look at the other ones. So let's say and, uh, 100 uh, cores and then VI, CD file. Now here you can see that the job that I launched with, with 100 cores just took nine minutes to, 10 minutes to, to, to compute. So that's, that's quite impressive. And then what is the advantage here? And please keep in mind that I'm using this cloud workstation. And um, perhaps through the web session, uh, there will be some, some lag. But uh, when I'm working interactively through my web browser on this remote workstation, there is zero lag. And when I compare the efficiency of that uh, interaction with a, with a live uh, workstation interaction on my, uh, on my own system, uh, there is there is truly no 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 difference in 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 time. Uh, so anyway, while we wait there for okay, let's launch uh, let's launch the post processing tool. So while we wait for the post processing tool, let me show you just one more thing here that we did for you guys today, and we're we're closing in to the end of this conversation. Um, well, we did a quick uh, using the exact same computation. I limited the computation to execute. 200 time steps with eight nonlinear iterations per time step. So we're talking about 1,600 iterations per job. Uh, so this, we have different number of cores that we have been used. And this is the CPU time in minutes uh, that the solver has consumed. Now we, we put in the on-demand hardware cost and the on-demand license cost um, that is offered by the partnership of Penguin and Numeca. You can see that this type of resistance analysis, they become quite affordable. So you can do a full resistance analysis for, uh, I mean, even if you use the best hardware, uh, you will be just spending less than $20 per, uh, per job uh, for, for a complete computation. And you can also see that the, well, the scalability is almost linear up to 100 cores. Now this model, it's, it's a very coarse model. I have to admit that it's a 1 million cells model. Um, and, and well, we're limiting the number of, of time steps uh, just to focus on the scalability and benefit. Uh, but um, but yeah, with a with the scalability where you can allocate up to a hundred thousand cores, uh, sorry, million cells. Sorry, no, no, a hundred thousand cells of your mesh allocated uh, for each CPU. Uh, we can observe a linear scalability up to a couple hundred cores easily. Um, so now let's go back to here, the interface, and for post-processing, uh, well, um, uh, let me show you quickly uh, a couple of the automated post-processing macros. So here we have imported the vessel solution. It just presents a wireframe, but you can easily use these macros, for example, to represent the free surface. 
let me uh, let me fit the view uh, make a top view of this uh, solution and let me turn on uh, repetition uh, we go. and as you can recognize this is a typical um, a representation of the solution is the wave elevation um, around the vessel the motion has been imposed uh, the degrees of freedom of the vessel are fixed uh, but anyway, it has reached the imposed final speed, and we can clearly see uh, the, the wave pattern. Uh, from there, you have other uh, processing options that are uh, already available out of the box. You have uh, the wave uh, elevation plot, where you can track in the hull of your body. You can see where um, uh, what's the, the the print of the of the wave on the on the whole vessel. Uh, you can also easily uh, compute the wet area of, of, the, of the vessel. Uh, let me reset this to the default. And well, there you can see um, in, the, in the solution uh, the submerged wet part of the body and well, the part that is exposed just to the air up there. And you can, uh, you can, let me zoom in there, you can take a look. Uh, there we go. So you can see also the the wave pattern, the mass fraction transition, uh, the free surface interaction with the with the solid body. So that's uh, that's the conclusion at the end of the of the demo. Uh, so um, for now, I just have uh, to thank you <laughs> for your time. And well, and also um, uh, here is our contact information. So if you would like to learn more about FineMarine, Marine, take a closer and deeper look into uh, the, the details of the Fine Marine capabilities or a personalized demo, uh, where I'm readily available. Uh, you can reach me at contact at numeca-usa.com. And well, for Penguin uh, competing on demand, uh, well, I give the word to Julie again. Um, and thank you for your time. And I guess we can start with the Q&A part of the webinar. Great. Thank you so much, Roque and Will. I really appreciate it. And yes, p please feel free to submit uh, any questions that you have via the chat function. Um, one question has come up. How much does POD cost? Well, Will I can take that one, Julie. <laughs> uh, yeah, Roque. Roque gave a, a, a very uh, nice picture of what it would cost for a simulation on POD. And basically speaking, as I said earlier, we do charge by, uh, by the core hour. And it varies a little bit across the, the different CPU architectures. Uh, the price runs from about seven cents a core hour for the, for the older architectures, uh, all the way up to 10 cents an hour for the newest Broadwells. And that's per core per hour. Great. And then another question, can I pay for the Numeca license by the hour? Um, yes, yes, I can. I guess I can take that. Um, certainly. So the Numeca licensing, I am, well, you can have um, the option of getting your license directly from Numeca and the standard licensing uh, contract, where you would get also access to uh, uh, fine a specific tech support, maintenance of the software updates, and such. Uh, and then the, the licenses are floating, so you can use them in the cloud. Uh, like for example with pod so we have several customers uh, doing that but also if you're planning to run um, a, a smaller batches of, of jobs uh, yeah certainly you can um, get the licensing uh, of the mega um, on demand so the uh, unfortunately at the time of this um, uh, webinar uh, the complete scheme for uh, on-demand licensing of the Mecca is, is 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 not something that I can totally show, uh, but but yeah, that will be announced shortly, and we will make sure that you guys that have attended the webinar uh, learn about it first. Okay. Great, thank you, Roque. And yes, and please do feel free to reach out to Roque with any questions on licensing. Um, we do have another question: Is there a way to identify the hardware hardware bottleneck during a job? For example, determine if CPU or RAM is pegged at 
Yes, there really is. And that, that is where the skilled insight part of the portal actually is very useful. Is you can look at that and you can see what your job is using, what resources it's using. And you can see both the memory and the CPU very easily. Uh, you can also see the, the network uh, traffic while that's doing it. So you can see if it's, if it's an MPI bottleneck. Great. Thank you, Will. Well, I see we're, we're coming up on, on about an hour here. So again, wanted to thank you all very much for attending today's webinar. We have recorded it, so we will work to provide that uh, for you so you can access that on demand as well. And if you do have any questions for POD or NUMECA, please don't hesitate to contact us. And thanks again for joining us today. Well, thank you so much, and uh, until next time then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks for Bye-bye.